You know, the economy is clearly slowing down. Inflation's out of control. The Fed is backing up, raising rates. I'm not sure anybody at this point has much confidence left in the Fed to navigate a, a, a soft landing. The markets sure don't. What do you what? attribute all of the recent selling to? Or is it kind of a D, all the above? No, I think I think you're right, Brian. It is all of the above. And I think the challenge right now is, is we're moving from a an orderly sell-off to what looks to me like like liquidations. And you know, that is normal operating procedure when you have a highly levered market. Like one of the challenges of this particular bull market cycle uh, over the past couple of years since the, the lockdowns was just the extraordinary amount of debt, yeah. just incredible amount of leverage that went into the system. Uh, the Fed and other central banks around the world handed out free money to investors, and those investors uh, took that free money and deposited it in their uh, brokerage trading accounts. And then the brokerage firm said, hey, why don't you take some more money uh, in the form of low interest loans since interest rates were so low? That's all starting to unwind. And one of the ugly things about liquidations is you don't get to sell what you want to sell. You sell what you have to sell. So everything goes down. Gold goes down. Uh, bonds go down. Crypto goes down. Everything goes down, not just stocks. Yeah, we're seeing that certainly across the board. I mean, it's not our futures are down here 300 points, Mark. But as we just showed our viewers, and this is a global program, we got people all over the world watching, markets yeah. everywhere fell. And this is not just, I guess I'll be fair, not just a U.S. Fed problem, is it? The Bank right. of Japan did it. The European Central Bank did it. The Bank of England did it. Yeah, look, I, I think everyone would would like to believe, I mean, I say everyone, meaning all the central banks globally, would like to believe that they can control the inflation that's raging around the world. And here I even said it. I, I actually don't believe it's inflation. Inflation is caused by excess demand with limited supply of goods and services. That's not what we're seeing in the last two years. What we're seeing in the last two years is currency devaluation, particularly in the West, uh, in Japan, in Europe, in the United States. And currency devaluation is not going to be reversed, right? We're not going to put those dollars and euros and yen back in the bottle. And I think one of the things that I, I follow is people say, oh, but the dollar is so strong. Look at DXY. No, all that means is it's less bad than the yen and the euro. Look at the dollar yen. It has gone absolutely ballistic in a bad way, uh, rising from 110 to 128 uh, over the past few weeks. Normally, in difficult periods of time, the yen has been a safe haven. Instead, it's getting liquidated. So when things are being liquidated, uh, central banks, again, they, they, they've been rendered not really that useful. And that makes a really difficult environment for investors. So where do you hide? Well, one place is to hide in, in short duration assets. The other is to, to look for value in a what was a really overvalued market. So there are pockets of value. And then the last is to, to increase your own liquidity. Uh, as I said, cash, cash equivalents, arbitrage, things like that. Yeah, I guess that's the Fed giveth and the Fed taketh away. And, and we are seeing a lot of pain. We're down nine of the past 11 weeks. All the stats I just threw out, Mark, you know, 5% drop from intraday Thursday high to Friday low. It, it's only happened, by the way, like 10 or 12 times in the past 20 or so years. But overall, investors have made a lot of money still, for the most part, over the past two to three years. So how do you view the, the longer term, not just today, tomorrow, next week? the longer term. Do you have a view? Yeah, look, if you look at the last two years, uh, we had extraordinary rebound off the, the COVID lows. Uh, you go back even further, five years, eight years, 10 years. We go all the way back 13 years to the global financial crisis. And the challenge is that all of that is really a, a sugar high. All of those gains are really devaluation of the currency. It's, it's money illusion. One of the interesting stats is, is we look at stocks, bonds, and other markets in currencies. And that makes sense. That's what we pay for them with. Uh, so we look at, at Japanese stocks in yen. We look at European stocks in euro. We look at U.S. stocks in dollars. 
The challenge is if we denominate those in money, right? Gold is money. It's the only asset that exists in the absence of a liability other than Bitcoin, which is the digital form of that. And when we look at stocks in nominal prices, in dollars, for example, it looks like we've been making all-time highs up until recently. Uh, the problem is if you denominate yeah. in gold, we're dead flat since 1996. So it's really currency devaluation, excess liquidity by central banks. And if that reverses, which I actually don't believe it will, yeah. I think they're threatening, and that is causing the agita, but I think they're going to back down and they're not going to raise nearly as much as they would think they would like to. We're starting to hear some chatter, some more chatter like that, Mark. You know, all this talk of five or six or seven more rate hikes or 75 at the next meeting. I know the Fed will say that they're not paying attention to the stock market. You and I have been doing this a long time. It's impossible to ignore it. We also have, by the way, you know, they got the November midterms. There's a lot of other stuff that's sort of churning under the surface out there. You think that the stock market decline recently is kind of sending a wake-up call to the Fed, and they may have to back up a little bit. No, Brian, you, you nailed it. This, this is a midterm election year in the U.S. And, and while you're right, this is, these are global markets, and, and there's a lot of things going on around the world that are impacting markets, uh, things like the, the shutdowns in, in China and the, and the backup of, of the ships in the ports and, and being empty is going to really weigh on GDP growth around the world. Supply chain problems are not going to get better. But at the end of the day, this is a midterm election market in the U.S., and there is, I think, zero chance we get six, seven, yeah. eight rate hikes. I, I think they'd be lucky to get away with another 50 basis points here in May. Uh, wow. I actually don't even think that's going to happen. I think they'll back down to 25. Uh, there's just no way the debt and deficit can support higher rates. They're in a box. And remember, Japan in 2007 said they were going to end QQE. They said they were going to stop buying their bonds. They've been buying bonds every day since 2007. They now hold 137% of GDP on the Bank yep. of Japan balance sheet. Same thing in Europe. They said when Draghi was leaving, oh, we're going to stop. And Lagarde has bought more than, than he has on a, a daily pace. So he thinks the lady doth protest yeah. too much. Uh, I think they're going to have to keep uh, Well, I, I love— I love how you were zero. You didn't even leave it at 2%, Mark. I love the 0% certainty. It wasn't 1%. You didn't leave the margin of error, which we love about you, the 0% chance.